I was gonna say the open questions about their ability to be, you know, still as powerful politically, uh, at least in the longer term, is an open question. But at least in the shorter term, they're doing a lot of the same things they've been doing, uh, remaining very close to former President Trump. Um, they just had him speak at the um, NRA Outdoor Show. And once again, you were on the ground for that event. And you you witnessed Trump speaking to NRA members. Uh, just give us a sense of of how he was received, what he, what topics he covered, how he tried to position himself as a, a gun rights champion, because um, these are all things we've covered for for a while now, especially during Trump's tenure and his candidacy now. Um, so give us your sense of, of how that went. Yeah, and I think I could keep this one a little bit shorter because I think this event ended up being a little bit of a letdown in terms of news value, interestingly, because you know they, this is the first time they've had a political speech at the Great American Outdoor Show, uh, which is more akin to a regular gun show uh, not, I mean, not quite, but because you don't actually sell guns, they sell, but they do sell basically everything else, ammo and knives and whatever else you might find at a gun. They even have the, the big long pieces of licorice, which is a thing like <laughs> at gun shows or something. I don't know why that's part of yeah. gun show culture. Licorice and jerky is. are jerky, always, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, barbecue sauce made yeah. by some, you know, somebody just random dudes, barbecue sauce, uh, super common things. It has all that stuff. Uh, right. Um, now it has a lot of thing hunting related stuff too, and out stuff beyond pure gun stuff because uh, it's an outdoor show, so it's a little bit more diverse. But you know, it has cars and side by sides, and there's a Ford Bronco there, and like Ram trucks and things like that. But yeah, um, so it's it's a lot more it's a lot closer to what your average gun show would be like than like the NRA annual meeting or Shot Show, which these those things are kind of closer to trade shows. Um, you can't really buy it unless you're a dealer. You can't buy anything at them. Um, in fact, you can't even get into SHOT Show if you're not in the industry, right? So this is so the Great American Outdoor Show is is much closer to just a uh, a gun show. And so they've done they haven't done political events at that before. Uh, you know, they swooped it. This was a Great American Outdoor Show was a was is a long running thing in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And there was a controversy years, I think it was after Sandy Hook, where the, op, the operator who had done it for a long time didn't want to uh, have the AR-15s on display after Sandy Hook. And so obviously that created a lot of backlash and forced them to sell the show to the NRA. And the NRA came in and bought it up and they've been operating it ever since. But they basically just kept it pretty much the same as it was, except until this year, where now they've added this presidential forum to the event, which seemed like, uh, I think we talked about this last week, like a pretty obvious clue that they were going to endorse Donald Trump because he was the only candidate invited to this presidential forum, even though Nikki Haley is still running against him in the primary. So it's, you know, it's sort of an obvious, like they picked Donald Trump, which is not surprising anyone, I don't think, because uh, they've been extremely close to him since 2015 right um and that but they didn't they didn't endorse him that was the weird part like they did everything as though they were already supporting him officially like their whole pre amble like the speeches leading up to trump were all about how he was the best president and they needed to get him back to being president um and so it was a it was a trump rally is what it was you know at its core but one paid for by the NRA, basically. And uh, it was a bit odd that they didn't actually endorse him. So it just ended up being a, a Trump rally at an NRA event. Um, and so it went along like a lot of other Trump rallies do. Um, <laughs> and it was, he mentioned that they weren't endorsing him. Um, and he didn't seem that bothered by it. Uh, he's, he, he made this like comment about how they better endorse him once he speaks at the annual meeting in May. Um, but that was it. Like he wasn't, he didn't rail against them for not endorsing him yet. Um, but it was, it was very odd in that sense. Like why, why did they do this event? <laughs> you know, like it wasn't, if you're not going to announce that you're endorsing him, but you're going to have like just a tr generic Trump rally anyway at your gun show. I don't know. It's just a strange, like it was hard to pull what the point of it was. And, and it was really just very similar to a lot of the other speeches he's done um, with the NRA. And now I will say when he speaks to the NRA, I feel like he gets, he stays a little, 
it's hard to describe this, right? I know people have been to Trump rallies or watched him, watched an entire Trump speech at one of these things, might have a better understanding of what I'm trying to relay here. Trump speaks in a very, um, just a flow of consciousness style, right? Yeah. I think mean, everybody knows that. But so his rallies can be very rambling. Um, he'll just go from one topic to the next and make a lot of asides into whatever he wants to say, uh, whatever comes into his head. Uh, and sometimes he'll repeat himself on different things and he might even contradict himself at points or, or whatever. Um, but uh, like I've always gotten the impression that when he speaks at NRA events, he does seem to value the idea of actually trying to make gun related promises. Um, so he clearly had a prepared remarks that I think focused primarily on gun issues. Um, and so you got periods where he was actually reading from those remarks that were very specific to what he was promising, which is mostly uh, really nothing new. I wouldn't say like it's he's going to roll back what Biden has done. Um, a lot of a lot of platitudes about being the best on guns ever. And and nobody touched your Second Amendment when I was president. And I'm not going to do anything to the Second Amendment when I'm to your guns when I if, you know, when I become president again. And Biden is the worst you know, president on guns and that kind of stuff. There's a lot of that, as you might expect. Um, and he promised like national reciprocity uh, was a specific legislative promise he made, which is something, again, he's he's already said in the past. I think he said that when he was at the end of his presidency. It right. never happened, of course, but um, that's one of the things that he, that's a sort of concrete promise he made. Um, but yeah, then you would get between those sections of the speech, you'd get just stream of consciousness stuff about all kinds of things. Um, and, you know, uh, one of the, th it's, uh, uh, geez. I don't know. I will say that as somebody who was there covering it as media, um, they still do. And the NRA did this too. Billy McLaughlin, who is the digital director, um, and Trump both had moments where they pointed at the media in the pen. Uh, it wasn't in the pen, but and I don't think people realized that was media for the most part. Um, but you know, they they did the thing where there was sort of a two minutes of hate thing, right? Like those the media people, they're awful. Everyone turn around and boo them and yell and curse at them, which is not a new thing. Right. He's been doing right. that since 2016. So, so it's, but it, uh, it does, I just be honest, it, it has a different feel now after January 6th. It just does. Right. I mean, it's a very intense experience if you've been there um, in person. Like that is one of the most animated points that the crowd gets is uh, just expressing how much they disdain the media, which, uh, you know, it's, and I think it's a very bad contrast to, um, what was a pretty good like valid critique of media coverage that the NRA had that Billy had had in his presentation about uh, they showed a video of uh, somebody who defended themselves uh, from an attacker by shooting them. Um, and he described that, you know, they had, the NRA had done an analysis of the top 10 newspapers and found that like they covered defensive gun uses very, very, very rarely. And, uh, especially in contrast to how often they cover criminal uh, gun use. And so this is like a very valid and researched point. Uh, and then you turn around and, and it was just like, everybody turn around and yell at the media people. And when I was walking out, you know, there was, there were some guys, ironically from the local Fox station who were carrying their camera equipment out. And um, this guy behind us was like really menacingly, um, like, um, uh, like mocking them in a very menacing way. Like, uh, it just makes me very uncomfortable. I mean, just to be completely honest with you, I, this is sort of an aside, um, to what was going on, but I, I, I know it's hard not to, to mention this stuff because it just feels different now. I, I've seen it before plenty of times and nobody got, look, no one did anything. I'm not suggesting that. Um, but, and then there were other women, when I was walking out, there were women talking about how the 
local Fox guys should be charged with treason, which if you don't know, carries the death penalty. Right. So, you know, the, the, these events, they, they oscillate pretty wildly from like excited cheering because people want to see Donald Trump and they love, they really love Donald Trump, uh, which is, you know, fair enough. And they cheer at some of the stuff he says and they like policies or whatever. And they laugh at his jokes and it's a jovial good time. And then there's these very intense um, moments of shared like disdain for a group of people who was in the building with them. Um, and look, that's what you got to be able to put up with that as media.